Hi there! Some of you might remember this wind turbine, because I partly took it apart in a previous DIY or buy episode. Back then I confirmed that this wind turbine can charge USB devices when there's enough wind speeds. But surprise, I live in Germany and here the weather is usually not that stormy. So for me, this wind turbine is pretty much useless. Unless of course I detach the propeller and find a way to spin the generator fast enough by hand in order to generate sufficient power. To accomplish this, I will show you in this video how I used the Fusion 360 software and my 3D printer to create two gear trains that attach to the wind turbine generator and let me spin it with sufficient speeds to output a bit of power. Let's get started! This video is sponsored by JLC PCB, which is a PCB company that was created for fast and cheap PCB prototyping. They are also very thankful for customer feedback, because it helps them to improve their service. So why not upload your Gerber files today and try out their $2 PCB service. First off, we have to find out how many RPM the generator requires in order to output a decent amount of power. To do that, I hooked up my USB tester as well as a power bank to its USB output, attached a piece of electrical tape onto its rotor and used my electric drill with its highest speed setting in order to spin the generator. And as you can see, it does output a usable amount of power. And by filming the rotor with the slow motion function of my camera and later analyzing how much time the electrical tape required to finish one rotation, I calculated an RPM of around 660, which equals around 11 rotations per second. At this point I tried figuring out how many rotations I could comfortably make with a hand crank per second and came to the conclusion that 3 would be the maximum. That means while we do 3 rotations with the hand crank, we want the generator to turn around 12 times, which would equal an amplification factor of 4. And that is where we need a gear train. You see, if we take 2 gears with the same amount of teeth, which is in this case 9, bring them together and spin one of them, then you can see that the other one performs the exact same amount of revolutions per minute as the one that is turning. But if we replace the spinning one with a bigger gear, that in this case has 36 teeth, then you can see that the smaller gear performs 4 complete revolutions, while the bigger gear only performed 1. This revolution factor of 4 to 1 is the same factor as the t-factor between the gears, which is 36 to 9, so also 4 to 1. And that is very simplified how you can change the RPM of motors or generators. So now that we know that we need a small gear for the generator and a bigger gear with 4 times the teeth for the hand crank, it was time for me to start the Fusion 360 software. Now I generally use the simpler 1 to 3D design software in order to create 3D models. But in this case Fusion 360 just offers more functions which are very handy to have for this task. To start off I selected the tools bar, opened the add-ins and selected the Spurgear scripts which I then opened. This add-in can basically create gears for us. And after I filled in the less important settings with some standard values, we can now focus on the module, number of teeth, gear thickness and hole diameter variables. By measuring my generator it was actually not hard to find out that I need a hole diameter of 30mm and a thickness of around 17mm. For the number of teeth I went with 9 and for the module number I went with 5 which is pretty much the minimum I could choose, because it depends on the whole diameter. It is also important to note that when we later add additional gears, we need to keep the module number always the same, otherwise they won't fit together. 
With that being said, I clicked on OK and thus got the small gear, which looked promising. Now the generator rotor comes with an unknown thread that we can use. To add such a thread to the gear, I switched over to the sheet metal tab and simply clicked on thread under create. Next I clicked on the gear's inner surface and thus was greeted with the thread settings, which after doing a bit of trial and error, turned out to be those. And with that being done, we got our first completed gear which, after 3D printing it, fit perfectly onto the generator's rotor. So next, I once again used the spore gear add-in to create the bigger 36 teeth gear. With the help of the move function, I then positioned the smaller gear to the sides until the dotted circles of both gears perfectly hit each other in one point. Which basically means that they will later perfectly interlock. And just like that, we got our basic gear train. To finish it, all I had to do was to create two mounting plates for it. Which was pretty easy to do through the help of the sketch function by adding some rectangles and circles and then using the solid extrude function. By the way, the holes in the plates are for two kinds of ball bearings, whose purpose you will see for yourself pretty soon. Now to complete the 3D model, I simply added two more cylinders to the bigger gear and then continued by creating a hand crank. Honestly speaking though, this was my first experience with Fusion 360 and I have to say that it is much more comfortable and intuitive to use than the 1-2-3D design software I used so far. But anyway, as you can see, my gear system was complete. And thus, it was time to 3D print all the parts with some leftover PLA filament I had laying around. And after removing all support material, I was basically left with these parts. So I inserted all the ball bearings, added M3 screws to the hand crank, pushed the bigger gear shaft through one big ball bearing and attached the hand crank to the other side of it. And as you can see, I can successfully turn the big gear, but eventually the shaft broke off, because it is not made for such forces. So I 3D printed a second big gear with a hole in the middle, for which I got myself this 8mm thick threaded rod. After creating a shorter piece of it, I secured it to the gear with nuts, pushed it once again through one bigger ball bearing and secured the hand crank to it. This time though, it felt a lot more stable and thus I pushed its shaft through the second ball bearing and secured both mounting plates to one another with M4 screws and nuts. To complete the system, I removed the M3 screw that holds the generator's rotor in place and secured it to the gear system with a longer screw, which goes through the second ball bearing. And as you can see, by turning the hand crank, the generator does turn 4 times faster than how we crank, which means this mission was a success. But sadly, by adding the USB tester as well as the power bank, you can see that I probably should have chosen a bigger amplification factor, because it was quite hard to charge up the power bank continuously. It would still be suitable for emergency situations though, and if you got an electric drill on your hands, then you can truly charge up your power bank easily. Needless to say though, this gear system looks a bit ridiculous because of its size, which I can totally understand. And that is why I designed the second gear train in Fusion 360. After 3D printing it and once again assembling it in pretty much the same way as before, you can see that we still got the same amplification factor than before. And the generator still outputs pretty much the same power. But the size of this new gear train is much smaller in comparison to the old one. The reason is that we are basically using 4 gears, with the first pair having a T-factor of 18 to 9 and the second pair also having a T-factor of 18 to 9. In this case, the T-factor of both stages gets multiplied, which once again leaves us with an amplification factor of 4. 
Of course, you could add even more gears to the system to get ridiculous factors. But then again, you would also increase the mechanical losses through friction. And with that being said, I hope you enjoyed this video. If so, don't forget to like, share, subscribe and hitting the notification bell. Stay creative and I will see you next time!